I am John Field. I am the smallest person on this um, webinar. I'm going to introduce the, uh, the people that will be speaking today. You're going to hear from uh, Dr. Wilkenfeld from the World Trade Center Health Program, who uh, mm -hmm. has been a forefront leader on neuropathy and other illnesses and the autoimmune auto uh, diseases. Uh, you're going to hear from Michael Barish and his uh, team of Lee London, Dom Penson, Dana. You're also going to hear from Marty and Keith, two cameramen who got sick um, during their time at Ground Zero filming. And um, they're going to tell you their stories. The media played a vital role alongside us first responders um, during the cleanup and the recovery. And um, I, I applaud you all for that. I salute you. Uh, you know, back in October, you guys gave me this award at the Emmys, the Presidential Award. And it means nothing to me right now if I cannot help you people tonight. So we're going to show you a video. And this video um, hopefully will lead you in the right direction. You're going to hear from the World Trade Center Health Program, Dr. Mark Wilkenfeld. Then you're going to hear from the legal team. You're going to hear the stories of these men. So we'll get this started. Thank you so much. Two and two, one. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way. On the morning of September 11, 2001, as most people ran away from the burning towers, many members of the media ran toward the scene, into the smoke. These were photojournalists, reporters, and producers some of whom have now been diagnosed with forms of cancer that have been linked to Ground Zero. They now presume 68 cancers are linked to these toxins, which the EPA originally told us was safe. Well, my law firm alone represents 53 journalists, and it's not just uh, these guys, but it's also the newspaper journalists. It's the cameramen. It's the guys behind the scenes that you wouldn't know about, and they were breathing the same toxic dust as the New York City firefighters and cops. The news crews are considered uh, responders, but we're not cops and firemen. We weren't there to save lives. But I'm proud of the fact that we documented what the police and the firemen and the iron workers all did that day and the weeks after. The first responders, I'm in awe. But I also am in great awe of those who came back to a war-torn neighborhood that was clearly toxic. We knew it, but you stayed anyway. The 25,000 residents, the 300,000 office workers, and the 50,000 students and teachers who were exposed to those toxins. Sign up now. Please, I urge you, access what you are owed. Wow. Um, that was tough for me to watch. And um, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, all members of the media for putting their own lives and health at risk um, to tell the story to the American people and give them up-to-date minutes of what was happening that, that day and the following days. And um, you, like first responders and responders and volunteers and those in lower Manhattan, you inhaled these toxins. 24-7, we were taking in toxins. We're here to help you. We're going to start off with Dr. Mark Wilkenfeld. So, you know, John said I was here representing the program, World Trade Center, but, I, but actually I'm not representing the program tonight. And I'm going, to tell you, I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people don't know about me. And again, I'm not here to represent the program. I'm here as a physician that specializes in chemical exposures and causation. And I myself have seen, you know, in various forms, I've seen over a thousand responders and survivors. Um, I've seen every group of people that you could possibly see who've had exposures, and I always find there's a new group. You know, we have podiatrists in the program, we have massage therapists in the program, and then John called me and he, and he reminded me, because I actually forgot myself, um, that we have journalists who are exposed, and, and I saw them myself downtown, and I, I want to tell you something else, and uh, you know, John said it was hard for him to watch. It's hard for me to watch as well, and he said we're family, and there's a reason that we're family, and the reason is that, that I myself, um, I lived in lower Manhattan, um, I watched the terrace collapse from my dad, from my dad's terrace. My dad was in his 80s, and I went over to check on him, and we watched his collapse together, and you know, I went over to the hospital. Nothing to do with the hospital, so next day I took my brother, and um, we went downtown. 
Now, when we were downtown, you, you, you saw the scene. You saw how horrible it was, and you could smell the air. And I remember a nurse tapped me on the shoulder, and she said, why don't you put on a mask? And nobody, you know, I myself, who spent spent 30 years before that, or 20 years before that, worrying about people with poor air quality, no one was thinking about it, and everybody was told that it was safe. So, so that's my experience with 9-11, and that's why I became so passionately involved from the very beginning on um, working with lawmakers such as um, Alan Gerson and Senator Clinton and um, Congressman Mavis to try to get the program um, set up because, you know, you, you, we take it for granted today. There's a program, and I, I got to thank John Field because without John and without people like him, and, I, you know, I would go way over the hour if I had to explain to you what these guys went through to get the program set up. But, you know, thank God today we do have a program. And the problem that I think we're having is that people don't know about it, which always shocks me. People either don't know about it or the other thing that I hear from some of my patients is that, um, you know, it's for other people. They, they don't want to take resources away from other people. Well, well the program is for everybody. The program is, is for firefighters, the program is for cops, the program is for iron workers, the program is for construction workers. The program is for Wall Street brokers that worked on Wall Street. The program is for students. The program is, is for me and my neighbors that all live downtown. The program is set up to help everybody. And I think it behooves everybody to sign up, okay? Because the other thing I hear is that, you know, I'm healthy. You know, I don't have to worry about it. People are healthy, but, you know, you're going to help us in two ways. I'll explain that in a minute. But I think that everyone needs, everyone who's eligible needs to sign up for this service. It's, it's not like you're following a legal case against the government, right? There's a list of conditions that are presumed to be related. And if you're diagnosed with one of those conditions and you've had the exposure, it's accepted, right? It's just accepted asthma, for example. You don't have to fight each case of asthma to prove that it's related, right? Certain kinds of cancers, unfortunately. You don't have to take each case before a courtroom and show the studies that have been done over the years have showed a link to these illnesses, okay? So it's a presumption. It's, it's really a matter of paperwork, okay? It's a matter of getting into the program and setting up your appointment with one of the, one of the centers of excellence, right? I'm not affiliated with the center of excellence. Um, so, uh, you know, there's no reason for me to, to, to push you to go to a certain one, but there's a number throughout the city. And as John will explain a little bit later on, there's also facilities in every state. Okay, what happens at that exam, and it's a free exam, it's, it's a checkup. And they will, these are specialists, so these are doctors that have seen hundreds, if not thousands of, of responders of all kind. They will go through your exposure history with you. They will go through the illnesses that you have, the symptoms that you have, and they will come up with a list of conditions, right, that, that they believe are related to your exposures, okay? That list is then sent in to the NIOSH to the NIOSH team that will certify it. Okay, there, there's no lawsuits, there's no problems. There, it's just done, and then you will come back with a certification. Okay, and that list is very important for us as physicians because that list entitles you to free treatment, free testing, and free medications. And honestly, I was shocked to hear how much medications for something as simple as asthma cost. Okay, now there's respiratory illnesses that have been linked. There are GI illnesses that have been linked. And you know, in, in the beginning, it's almost like a constant fight. First, you hear that the air is okay. Then you hear that the air causes asthma, but maybe it's not so bad. And then you start hearing the stories that maybe cancer are caused by it. So there's a list of presumptive cancers, all right? And you can see this list in front of you. And again, being exposed to this, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to freak everyone out. Being exposed does not mean you're going to get cancer. But being exposed means you have to be on top of your health. And I just want to say, you know, I, I saw a journalist downtown and I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, first of all, for, for being downtown and, you know, having attended many press conferences um, in the days after 9-11. Um, I want to thank you for all the work that you did to, um, you know, to highlight the problem. So now there's another job for you. The job for you is to let people to know about the services that are available. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Next up is my dear friend, Michael, Michael Barish. Well, thank you, John. Um, and I, I want to welcome all of you as well. Um, you know, John in particular will not, um, you know, tell everybody just how important he was to the passing of this bill. Um, but in 2011, again in 2015, again in 2019, 
we had to fight to get Congress to understand that uh, this was not just a New York issue, that this was an attack on America. It was so infuriating for us watching all the congressmen every 9-11 post on their website and on their uh, social media, we will never forget today. But they weren't voting in favor of the passage of the Zadroga Act in 2011, and then again, the extension and the full funding in 2015 and 2019. And John, along with his friend, John Stewart, really shamed Congress uh, into doing the right thing. I mean, look, we all remember the EPA lied to us when they told us the air was safe to breathe. Remember that? Well, it wasn't safe. Uh, we were honored to represent Detective James Zedroga. Uh, Jimmy died of pulmonary fibrosis in 2006. And when they did his autopsy, they found ground glass in his lungs, as well as asbestos, chromium, lead, benzene. These are all known carcinogens. And if he had it in his lungs, I'm afraid we all do as well. Um, why some of us are getting sick, why some of us are dying, it's hard to tell, maybe it's our immune system, but as John said, none of us are immune. So please, let's be each other's advocate. We were uh, victims once, let's not be victims again. Um, wait, wait, Michael, can I cut you off for one second? Of course. Everybody needs to know that um, Michael's law firm was three blocks from ground zero. And this is personal for Michael because he lost um, employees in his office from cancer. He's hired 9-11 uh, Heroes kids who died of cancer. And Michael himself is a cancer survivor from 9-11. So um, sorry to put you on the spot like that, Michael. But this uh, is this is important to all of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we were all uh, exposed to some really horrific stuff. And look. So the EPA did the wrong thing when they lied about the quality of air. Well, let's give Congress credit. It took a while, but they passed the Zedroga Act. They extended it. They fully funded it. What's so frustrating for us right now is the fact that while 80 percent of the firefighters and cops have enrolled in the free nationwide health program that you heard Dr. Wilkenfeld talk about, less than 10 percent of the journalists Less than 10% of the students, teachers, downtown residents, and office workers are enrolled. And that's because we hear it every single day. I didn't know that this was for me. I thought it was just for the first responders. Or I didn't want to take money away from the cops and firefighters. They deserve it more than me. Or, oh, my uh, mother had breast cancer. How do I know that this breast cancer that I have or this prostate cancer or skin cancer or any cancer is related? Well, as Dr. Wilton Fell told you, there's a presumption and you shouldn't feel guilty about applying because it's now been fully funded. And also, as Dr. Wilton Fell said, the more people that enroll, even healthy ones, gives us a better chance to add new illnesses down the road. So let me talk for a moment about who's eligible. And as you see in the map here, there are two different areas. Now, this is just what you're looking at now is downtown Manhattan. But of course, people who are at the responders who were at the Pentagon between 9-11 and November 19th of 2001 for more than four hours, any four hours, they will be eligible. Yet less than 5% of the Pentagon responders are enrolled in the health program. And you need to be in the health program and certified by the health program to be eligible for compensation from the victim fund. Um, but looking at this map here, the orange or pink, peach colored area is below Canal Street. If you were in any of those, that area below Canal Street, and um, even in the stat, at the Staten Island landfill, if you were covering stories out there in Staten Island, you would be eligible for both the Victim Compensation Fund and the health program. If you were north of Canal Street or even in Western Brooklyn, you'd be eligible for the, uh, you'd be, if, as long as you were south of Houston Street, you'd be eligible for the health program, but not the Victim Compensation Fund. I know that sounds arbitrary and it is, 
but this is what the doctors came up with when they came when they um, when they passed the bill. So to be eligible, you have to have been either caught in the dust cloud on 9/11 or spent more than four hours altogether in the first four days or more than 24 hours in the month of September or 80 hours altogether, which is really just two full work weeks between 9-11 and May 30th of 2002. I know this is a lot of information and I welcome you to visit our website, um, 911victims.org. Um, there's so much information on there. Um, I wanna introduce you to Marty Glembowski. Marty, hi, and thank you for joining us. Tell us a little bit about your story. Um, um, <clears throat> first off, I wanna thank you, John, for what you're doing. Michael, incredible representing me, and I really appreciate it very, very much. The reason I know that is because I just saw a dear friend of mine, Bruce Martin, sitting next to you on CNN, and he called me and urged me to go into the Victims' Compensation Fund. And I think, as you know, we lost Bruce last year. He was one of my heroes. Uh, he brought me into TV. And it's a bit sad for me to actually see that. Um, I was a cameraman at Channel 7, WABC Eyewitness News on September 11th. And my reporter, NJ Burkett, and I made it to the base of the tower. In fact, I probably shot the last footage of Fee Han and his team uh, at the command center. Um, I shot that first stand-up that you saw on that video of Newt. Um, and the building fell on us. And um, well, what's interesting is that I, we, we made it through, a fireman pulled me through the door and I went out through the back and I had been in a lot of situations with bodies. And I gotta tell you something, I smelled something in the air, but it was, it was a toxin. It wasn't just people, it was a, there was something in the air. I spent the week down there and months. Um, I was at the, in the World Trade Center monitoring program at the beginning. I think I was maybe 204, somewhere there. The, the union called me up and said, you better get in. And I am really blessed that I did. They have cared for me for years. They found basal cell carcinomas. I had a small lump in my, my shoulder. It turns out to be a massive lipoma. Um, I'm certified for, for the basal cell carcinoma as well as mental health. And I think that's really important. I'm sure everyone that is listening to this can understand what we saw was damaging to my mental health, to our mental health, it really was. So I'm here simply to urge you, get in there, no matter what it is. Victims Compensation Fund, you have to be a part of it. You have to do it for your family in the end. It's really, I mean, I have a daughter. I, I, I'm doing this to take care of my family in the end. And as far as the World Trade Center monitoring program, I go every year. I look forward to it very, very much. I know the people. I see them again. And we've become family. And, and they're looking out for me. Marty, thank you very much. All right, Lee, London, my partner, please tell us a little bit about the Victim Compensation Fund and Personal Injury Awards. So thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us today. I really do um, appreciate you spreading the word and finding out this information for yourself, because that is why we're here today. We are here to give you the right information and to make sure everyone understands what they are entitled to. So just to be very clear, when the Zadroga Act was created, it was broken down into two entities. You have the World Trade Center Health Program on one side, and you have the Victim Compensation Fund on the other side. The World Trade Center Health Program is free monitoring and treatment for the rest of your life. Everybody on this webinar, a cameraman, a reporter, a journalist, the guy driving the truck down, holding the cameraman and the journalist down there, you guys are all first responders, okay? You would not have been in the zone but for the attack and you get the benefits of being a first responder with the World Trade Center Health Program and you do not have to be sick to join the World Trade Center Health Program. A survivor, a Wall Street broker that worked in the zone, a resident that lived in the zone, they have to be sick to join the health program. First responders do not have to be sick. They can enter the health program, go for monitoring and treatment. And ever since COVID, many people have been pushing off their doctor appointments. Do not do that. Please continue going and protect yourself and your family. But I want to talk about the Victim Compensation Fund. On the one side, you have the World Trade Center Health Program, which is free medical and monitoring. But then you have the Victim Compensation Fund, which was set up to compensate you for your conditions and for many other aspects um, of a Victim Compensation Fund claim that you can make. 
So the first thing that I want to talk about is a monetary reward for your pain and suffering. Also a non-economic loss claim where you get compensated for the conditions that you have. The VCF will not give you an amount per condition. They will look at the totality of the situation and they will give you an award based on that. But the best part and the reason why John Field, the Field Group Foundation, Michael Barish, his firm, our firm, um, spent so much hours in D.C. to make sure this fund was permanently funded and extended or was for everyone who hasn't been diagnosed yet, hasn't been sick. You know, we want to make sure this fund is open for everyone. God forbid you get that moment or you get that call from your doctor that these benefits are there for you and your family. Um, but just going through non-economic loss, you know, non-cancer conditions, it can range from 20000 to 90000 but I've been doing this for 10 years. So if I got someone an award in 2015 for asthma and then they get diagnosed with another condition, non-cancer or cancer, I can amend your claim for an increased award. You never waive your future legal right. So if I get you an award today and then 20 years from now, you get prostate cancer, breast cancer, I can amend your claim for an additional award. That's why we want people to start out in this process, even if they're healthy because we want you to get the paperwork in now, get your proof of presence documentation together now. What's proof of presence? Proof of presence documentation is what ties you to your 9-11 exposure. And I must thank the cameramen, the journalists, the reporters, because I use your footage to help out many other clients who we see in your freeze frame of your camera so we can show the victim compensation fund. Yes, these people were there. Yes, look, he was caught in the dust cloud. You know, it is all important. Everybody knows someone who was impacted by 9-11. And that's why we're here today. But let me just go back to the awards that people can get for moving forward on a claim like this. So non-cancerous, non-life-threatening awards can range from 20 to 90,000. Skin cancer, it is the largest organ on the body and it is covered under the Victim Compensation Fund and certifiable under the World Trade Center Health Program. Everybody must go for a full body skin exam, basal, squamous, melanoma all covered conditions under the fund, and many people can't connect the dots. If I reported, or if I was a cameraman in 2001, and then I get diagnosed with melanoma 20 years later, we want people to make that connection. And cancer claims can range from 200,000 to 50 to 340, 340,000. That is tax-free money that will help you. Just like um, Dr. Wickenfeld said, it is expensive to treat even asthma. So we want to make sure that you have, you know, you're not thinking about how am I going to pay for my cancer treatment? How am I going to be able to support my kids if I'm only 50 years old and I got this cancer diagnosis? That's why this fund has been set up for you. And it has been set up for your coworkers, your friends. If anyone has 9-11 exposure, they must start asking questions. Other than non-economic loss, the Victim Compensation Fund compensates for economic loss, loss of earnings. So you could not perform your job anymore and your cancer caused you to go out of work, we can make a loss of earnings claim for you to make you whole again, okay? That is something that we do every day because you have no idea how young workers, residents, um, I just had a Stuyvesant High School student get diagnosed with bladder cancer at the age of 37. So this is happening, but the VCF has programs in place to compensate you and make you whole again. Um, another amazing program that the Victim Compensation Fund has is our Terminal Expedite Program. God forbid you get a shortened life expectancy, a stage four cancer diagnosis, the Victim Compensation Fund can expedite your claim and turn around an award for you in less than two to three weeks. You can avoid the health program and you will be covered and compensated. Now, um, we have a client and um, a ABC cameraman, Keith Silverman, um, as a panelist as well. So Keith, I wanna, I wanna turn the floor over to you. Can you just explain to everyone your experience on 9-11 and your just experience going through the programs? Yeah, um, I, I'd first like to thank Lee and Mike. I mean, they've been amazing throughout the whole process. So I was a little different than Marty. I was a freelance cameraman. I was working for ABC Network News that day. I remember I was actually doing Fashion Week on 42nd Street uh, when the first plane struck and we were sent down to the Ground Zero right after that. So I spent months at Ground Zero and 
Um, several years later, I started getting weird symptoms. They became somewhat debilitating. And in 2005, I was diagnosed um, with Hodgkin's, stage 2B Hodgkin's lymphoma. I have asthma. I had um, <clears throat> reactive airway disease, several other breathing uh, disorders. And I became acquainted with, um, with Mike and Lee, um, I think around 2007. Um, and they took me through the process from beginning to end. And I remember that initially, I think, Lee, we lost our first case and you took me through the appeals process and you were completely undeterred and you were confident that we would be successful and we were. And uh, it was just from every, every aspect of what the gentleman did for me, it was amazing. Uh, I, I would like to say that I was part of a community of freelance cameramen. And unlike Marty, we're not connected. We're, we're in the union, but we're not connected to the union. And I think the reason that a lot of guys and ladies that did what I did, we don't communicate with each other. We don't have a brotherhood like the firemen, like the, like the police officers. So it's hard for us. We were in competition with each other. So we didn't spend a lot of time communicating. I actually found out about uh, Mike and Lee through a friend of mine that was a New York Times photographer, who I think has since passed away. And he sort of steered me in that direction just by chance. But that's why I think a lot of folks in our industry just don't know about this. And also, I think you gentlemen are right. I don't think people feel that they were deserving of this. I remember being in the firehouse on Liberty Street a couple of days after the, the attacks and seeing, you know, the, the half drunk cups of coffee and the dust and the towels of the guys that just dropped everything and ran across the street without thinking about it for a second. And I felt that I was not the same as them. I was just there doing a job. They were there doing, you know, they didn't care about their life. They didn't care about their well-being. They were just there to help other people. So I think we all feel differently about what we did. And um, I was at the first attack as well. So I've been covering news and been in dangerous situations a lot. And I never thought twice about what we did that day. Thanks so much, Keith. I mean, we just want to make sure that people make that connection, make that connection that you made. And just that cancer diagnosis isn't the one thing that wakes them up to finally start searching. But other than a um, personal injury claim, the Victim Compensation Fund has unbelievable benefits for a wrongful death claim, which my partners, Dom Penson and Dana Cohen, um, will speak about now. Thanks, Lee. You see on this slide um, that we have up uh, some of the uh, presumptive amounts. Uh, that are awarded on wrongful death claims. Um, this is not a total list. Uh, it's a total list of the categories, but not of the amounts. So you see that it's possible uh, if you uh, file a claim for wrongful death to, to get $250,000 uh, for the pain and suffering of the victim. Uh, if the victim was survived by a spouse, $100,000 for their spouse and $100,000 for every dependent that they had. Each one gets $100,000. Uh, the award for lost household services means that you can also collect an award for the cost of replacing the things that the victim used to do for the household. You can get all the funeral expenses reimbursed, whatever they were. Uh, the, the funeral home, the cemetery, flowers, a repast, uh, it's all reimbursable. And very importantly, uh, lost earnings, uh, future lost earnings. If a person passed away before uh, their, the end of their work life expectancy, then their, their family can recover for those lost years. And that can be very substantial. And of course, if they never brought a personal injury claim while they were alive, the family can recover for that too. So they can bring that personal injury claim that, that Lee was talking about, and they can bring the wrongful death claim. They can pursue both. And I'm gonna pass the baton to Dana, who's going to talk to you about what we can all do in the, all of us who are in the 9-11 community now to help our family in the event that our family were ever to need to file such a claim. Thank you, Don. John Field started this webinar by telling you that he loves humanity. And I can tell you that he means it. I see it every day. 
And it is a very special honor to be on a webinar with John Field. And I think that with all that he's done for humanity, for the 9-11 community, if he tells you to get in the program, you should get in the program. And that is the most important thing that you can do, uh, not just for yourself, and you would be doing it for yourself, but also for your family. Um, the reason that's so important is if you are found eligible by the Victim Compensation Fund now, and you were to pass away from a 9-11 related illness, and sadly, all too many people in the 9-11 community do, your family will not have to go out and find the witnesses for you. They will not have to go out and get the medical records showing that you were diagnosed with this cancer. All of that will have been done for them. And so the wrongful death benefits that the Victim Compensation Fund uh, awards to families would be there for them. So it is so important to get in the program. Uh, you are part of a community, not just the, the journalist community, not just the media community, but the 9-11 community. And as members of the 9-11 community, we channel our inner John feel and we talk to each other and we tell each other about this program. And we don't just assume that the people we're talking to know about it. Um, they might not. Uh, families who lost someone might not. Somebody who's sick might not. Somebody who is healthy but was there might not. So talk to the people you know who are part of your community. Talk to them about these programs. Make sure they know that they are eligible. And for all of you uh, journalists watching, for Marty, for Keith, it's an honor to be here with you too because of the important contribution that you made. Um, and I just want to make sure all of you understand the help that's available. Uh, it is important that your families know about this. So talk to your families. Make sure they understand what is available to them if something were to happen to you. Uh, they can't get help if they don't know that they're entitled to it. Make sure they know who to call. Um, all of that are, are things that you can do for your family now. Uh, you were exposed, Dr. Wilkenfeld talked about it. So be proactive in protecting your health. Go to those annual exams. You know, COVID was a big setback for people. They missed mammograms, they missed uh, colonoscopies, they, they missed a lot of uh, the, the preventive medicine that, that we know is so important. We can't do that in the 9-11 community. We have to be very diligent about going for those exams. Um, get a will. That's another thing that you do for your family. And it's actually very important for this process because the person that you name as the executor uh, in your will is the person who will bring the victim compensation fund claim if you are to pass away from a 9-11 illness. You get to choose who that person is. You get to talk to them, make sure they know. So having a will is very important. You also get to decide where some of the wrongful death benefits will go. And that you can only do that if you have a will. If you don't have a will, you get no say in that. Um, and call us, you know, if we, we got some questions, uh, you know, including one about, um, you know, someone who was uh, at the site in March, you may be eligible. It depends upon how many hours you were there. It costs nothing to talk to us. We will answer any questions that you have. We, we, it's important to us to share this information, so, so call us. Um, and as for the benefits that are available to your family, that was another question. The answer is absolutely yes, yes, yes. If anyone who was there passes away from a 9-11 illness, their family is entitled to benefits. It's very important that they know about it. I want to thank Mike Costell, NJ Birkin, and everybody at the Emmy, uh, the New York Academy of Sciences and Arts and all that good stuff, the New York Press Club, the national media. Um, you guys are my heroes. For 20 years, we fought Congress, and you were our sword. You told our story, and um, I'm humbled. And I pray that everybody shares this with their colleagues.